Welcome all to the ISA online PG classes. And today we have amongst us Dr. Sinat Urai R from Bangalore. And uh, I had a very nice interaction with him uh, at uh, a few days ago at Gulabagari and uh, at uh, Kalaburgi. And we discussed about this topic. And he is doing a lot of work in organ donation. And uh, then came up this idea. Say, what our anesthesiology PGs can do. And he told me that they can do wonders in organ donation uh, in India. So I cordially invited him for today's talk. Uh, thank you, Dr. Chinadurai R. Sir, for joining us today. And uh, we shall be, uh, I am very sure that our residents will be benefited from your talk. And uh, I request Dr. Ankur Kendalwal, the moderator for today's program, to carry it forward. Thank you so much, sir. On behalf of ISA online PG classes, I welcome all the faculty members, delegates, and dear residents for yet another important session. The topic of the today's session is very, very important. Again, a very burning, very important topic in current era, organ donation. And to discuss this topic and to share his insights, today we have with us Dr. Chinna Durai R. Sir. He is a lead intensivist at Esther Avi Hospital, Bangalore. Sir did his MBBS uh, from Stanley Medical College, thereafter DA from Madurai Medical College and MD Anesthesia from CMC Valo. He has also done European Diploma in Critical Care and has been practicing critical care for the past 18 years. He has worked as head of the critical care in Columbia Asia Hospital and Spursh Super Specialty Hospital, where he was uh, instrumental in establishing the advanced ICU. He is an active member of Brain, Brainstem Death Committee appointed by Jivana Santa Kate, and he has coordinated more than 100 organ donations in Karnataka. So it's an absolute pleasure and privilege to have Dr. Chinna Durai, sir, amongst us, because of his vast experience in this field, I'm sure all the residents, all the members who are attending this program will be benefited. So kindly attend the session. And if you do have any queries for the speaker, kindly post your queries in the chat box. All the queries will be taken by sir at the end of the session. May I now invite Dr. Chinna Durai, sir, to begin his session. Sir, you can share your screen. Yes, sir. Absolutely fine, sir. You can proceed. Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, good evening, uh, my dear friends and students. Um, uh, this is my, this is the topic uh, from my heart. Uh, and uh, this is the day I'm able to connect across India, all the senior doctors, teachers, and uh, PGs. Uh, when I met uh, Dr. Naveen sir in Gulbergi, uh, you know, I was telling uh, how we made recently, uh, you know, improved organ donation rates in Karnataka uh, because of involvement of uh, uh, postgraduate students of anesthesia uh, in various medical colleges. That's what the thought process came immediately and connected with the CSSA. We are happy to uh, host you for this talk. Thank you, Mr. Paul. Um, as you all know, uh, organ donation in India, um, uh, we, we are not as per international standards as you all know, the Spain is the leading in the world uh, they're doing almost 40 donations per year per million population. But what we are doing in India is just 0.5. Just imagine we can improve our donation by another 80 times in India. On average, we are doing in India, we're doing around uh, 800 to 1,000 donations in, per year. But we can go up to 80,000 to 1 lakh donations per year. That means huge potential. As you all know, come across in anesthesia practice, 
we are doing a more and more organ transplantation now you know we were doing renal in the past then liver uh, now liver become easier you know you see some of you notice skin to skin of liver transplant happening within 6 hours then they started doing now heart and lung transplants now the teams in some of the hospitals in india they they done more than 300 uh, you know lung transplants and uh, in the success rate to, you know of this even heart and lung transplants also gone up to you know 90 95 percentage uh, as you know that during covid time a lot of people undergone uh, uh, you know bridge therapy of ECMO followed by lung transplant so as we all know india is performing a very good recently last five years of all kind of transplants all organ transplants the transplant is the future definitely by doing more and more uh, uh, you know cadaver brain dead identification and donation we can completely can eliminate live donations from you know uh, you know from the patients or their shadow on the, the kidneys and part of the liver we can do this is also I, that's why i want to give more importance for this topic today's pgs are tomorrow's consultants tomorrow's senior doctors by the time they reach maybe goal of five to ten years down the line you want to completely in india to stop completely live donations we are go depend upon completely uh, cadaveric organ donations so that our future generations definitely will be benefited by this you know noble thought and noble uh, cause and so that we can be successful um, thank you for the introduction as i was doing this organ donation for last uh, almost 15 years uh, we have done almost now i involved personally now almost 150 organ donations my career and last the three years we are gone more than uh, you know on average we do around 30 donations per uh, year and recently the government of Karnataka appointed me as a brain death committee you know member uh, the three of us member i'm so active in that any any brain death happens across Karnataka anybody have a doubt through the Jeevana Sartre, the, the Soto, they call me, I just handhold them for organ donations. It is not rocket science, I tell you, as we all anesthetists, we used to do high-end work. We never run out of difficult caravan, never run out of uh, difficult procedures. Um, you know, in the OT, we are physicians that with, the, with this knowledge, we can identify and we can do wonders. See, what I want the Karnataka we recently did, it's called a Soto, uh, you know, a state, uh, uh, you know, organ tissue transplant organization. We started some of the NDORC, that means non transplant organ retrieval center. We have identified most of the government medical colleges and district hospitals and uh, the government of Karnataka given the license for them to identify the brain stem patients and uh, we, you know, given them the license so that especially government medical colleges, PGs, finally PGs, secondary PGs, those who are managing ICUs 24 bar 7, we connect to them and through them we certify brain stem death recently many patients and we successfully harvested organs from them. And as I told uh, in, 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 in uh, Bangalore, through Bangalore Medical College Trauma Center, through the PTs, we managed many recently, uh, you know, the center become more viable and identifying at least three to five brain dead patients every month. Now one or two organ donations happening and uh, who be some medical college. So PTs involved overnight, we manage over the phone uh, thanks to COVID, where we managed uh, more secret patients through WhatsApp, video call, and uh, you know online, you know education. So it happened now. So we identify these patients in you know very remote uh, where there's no, they don't have even invasive monitoring system. We successfully managed with the NIDP without invasive the EJD for all the supports without the central line. We successfully harvested almost every organ, including the lung and heart. So that 
when the PG is so actively involved learning today's class and the critical care some extent you manage with, along with other doctors, you can do a lot of wonders. With this, I go to, you know, next, you know, slowly, there's a case history, for example, the road truck accident with a severe head injury, who can all, uh, you know, when you come to the emergency room, when you come to the, your, um, you know, uh, uh, your ICUs, the patients with a severe head injury, somebody's GCS less than fine, they, need, they won't go for brain death immediately. They take a couple of days time to become brain dead. Even after the surgery, they slowly brain tend to swell, 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 and the herniation happens at the end where the blood flow to the brain completely cuts off. Or in a patient with a major stroke like MCA or whole ICA stroke where brain in a one side of the brain in Fox, the swelling happens, malignant the swelling happens, then slowly the patient you know, go to brainstem death. Make sure these patients know history of drugs, you know, overload. Or patients on shock with unconscious, we cannot proceed. Make sure patients maintaining normal blood pressure with the vasopressor supports. And we should treat any hyponatremia in case if the sodium level less than 125, we have to treat aggressively the 3% saline drink more than 125 at least. And make sure patients not having severe hypoglycemia like less than you know, 45, 50. So will this eliminate your metabolic causes for altered sensorium with the history of stroke and trauma? The CT scan should show, there is a finding, CT scan should show like this. You can see the CT scan on the left side, you can have, it's a thick SDH, you know, you can see that. SDH with the midline surf, you can see the midline surf. You cannot see the brain clear, salsegai, that means this patient is having severe head injury. This is the post-operative in the right side CT scan. Uh, you know, we can see multiple hemorrhagic uh, swellings, you know. These kind of scans will obviously will show this patient is having very poor GCS anytime the patient may be brain dead. When you go for the next slide, you can see this left side, you can have uh, you know, uh, you know, left side, you can have severe ischemic stroke, ischemic stroke on the left side with the midline cell. The right side CT scan, you can see, you know, the, you know, the major bleed in the brain with intraventricular extension. This patient also definitely will go within 48 hours brainstem death. This is for educating our uh, PGs. The left side CT scan, you can see the normal CT scan, where you can see the center part of the left side scan as a brain stem, which contains your midbrain pons, surrounded by this is called basal cisterns. Even before your neurologist, neurosurgeons comes and tells you, oh, the brain stem is completely effaced, it's brain stem dead. You can ourselves, you know, you can identify. There, there is a cistern, you can see the black thing around that is ESA containing cistern. The right side scan, you can see completely closed. If somebody, you can see the scan, the brainstem area without any, you know, empty space around this patient, 100% going to brainstem death, you know. This is where simply you can read the, uh, your uh, CT scan pictures and you can tell the patient is brainstem death. What are the first findings when in many patients admit in ICU, patient is on ventilator, you know, you know, suddenly we see, okay, the patient is comatose. He's not having any response, no eye opening and no movement. Okay, this patient is comatose. GCS of these patients should be E1. He won't open eyes. M1 means he won't move. Anyway, patient will be obviously on ventilator. That's a BT. There is no conference during suctioning. Nurses will tell you, sir, when in the morning, when he started suctioning through the uh, tracheostomy or your endotracheal tube, if your nurse tells that there is no movement, no cough reflex, this would immediately stimulate your brain, oh, this patient doesn't have cough reflex, that means the patient is already brain stem dead. Make sure this patient was not on any relaxants more than, uh, you know, within next, within recent 24 hours, on no sedation also within 24 hours. If at all stay, please stop it immediately and wait for the next 24 hours to recheck the cough reflex again. And check your pupils, whether fixed and dilated. Obviously, the brain stem patients, the nurses tell us 
light reflex is absent. There is no movement during positioning. Sometimes when you positioning patients, moves the limbs, this particular patient won't have any movement. So that obviously this all first finding to stimulate you to think in terms of the patient's brainstem death. How to diagnose brainstem death now? As I told, patients does not have spontaneous breathing. Sometimes we must do mistakes to put the patient on C-trap and see whether the patients are breathing. Sometimes there will be auto-triggering happens when the patient is on low CPAP. Ideally speaking, disconnect the ventilator after oxygenating the patient for three minutes through the ventilator and disconnect the uh, circuit and see whether patients are in spontaneous breathing by exposing the abdomen. And there's going to be any spontaneous movement, as I told before, no cough reflex. Suddenly, what happens? Your nurse will come and tell, sir, last hour urine output. These patients should be always monitored hourly urine output. It should not be 24 hours. You sometimes may miss the boat. So what happens? Every hour we have to monitor the urine output. What happens when the patients have a brainstem death? The posterior pituitary stop secreting vasopressin hormone. Since the vasopressin hormone stops secreting, the collecting tubules of your kidney lost control over your water absorption so that suddenly if you see the urine output will be one liter or 500 ml to one liter suddenly last one hour is like a plain water it not like any darker in color so that this also tells you oh this patient is going for brainstem death or coning anytime soon going for coning what are the confounding factors before you go this patient branded them as a brainstem death make sure patients should not have a shock or hypotension you have to maintain mean not repression more than 65 in adult patients maybe pediatric patient according to their age and make sure hypothermia we recently found many patients hypothermia being missed because after the covid after the ban of your uh, you know thermometer with the mercury now digital thermometer fools many of the you know healthcare professionals what the direct check the go and keep in the x law or you know and uh, you know some link is false alarm they press it they go for reset value which is normal the nurses keep on writing 98.4 98.4 98.4 but when you touch the patient they'll be cold and sometimes you start to see the you know altered uv kind of thing in the ecg and a lot of arrhythmias happen then we insert the nasopharyngeal probe the temperature is the 30 degree uh, you know celsius or 90 degree fahrenheit that's what to make sure this patient's covered properly and measure appropriate temperature by whatever uh, method available in the bedside and make sure the patient didn't have any neurotoxic snake venomation and sometimes some patients have encephalitis anybody comes with normal you know your uh, ct scan with a normal history, suddenly convulsions. Obviously, any encephalitis patients, there is this contraindication for organ donation. So these patients should not have a, you know, make sure there's not bullion barrel syndrome, no other cause of encephalopathy, no severe hypophosphatemia, and any drug causes, you know, for example, neurological, neuromuscular function, but sometimes on infusion of neuromuscular relaxant high dose for a long time. So make sure that means stopped. Sometimes you can do the train of four, you know, before going to next step. So as I told, metabolic and endocrine disorders to be ruled out. Patients should have temperature more than 30 degree uh, uh, Celsius. Uh, in. What are the tests once you rule out, you know, anyway, you see in the first history, stroke or uh, convulsion. Patients sometimes one of them had a known seizure disorder and have a recurrent convulsions without any history of fever headache, they still can donate. But most of the patients with be stroke, posterior circulation stroke or anterior circulation major stroke, along with head injury, the basic history and your CT scan should, second finding should be there in the CT scan. Then we have to do the testing for brainstem functions. So obviously I told the patient should be comatose even V1 M1 should be there and there is no spontaneous breathing should be there after you have to disconnect don't put them on CPAP and check disconnect ventilator with 100% oxygenation for three minutes then find there is no spontaneous breathing your pupillary size should be dilated and fixed 
And sometimes patient of a cataract surgery may mislead or patient of eye injuries may mislead, but we can skip this in case there is injury, you can write in the chart saying that we could not examine and the pupillary reflex will be absent. This is called dolce movement. You shake the head left and right and see whether eyeball is moving like a toy. If there is no dolce movement, yes, patient has his brainstem death. Apply the cotton on the cornea and see very painful reflex sometimes where the patient is blinking or not. You have to rule out there's no reflex. And any motor response on the cranial now, for example, above the eyebrow and the cheek, you have to angle the mandible and you have to pinch with the pain, press, uh, you know, any pain is there when the patient is moving. But sometimes when you pinch your fingers or toes, patient may withdraw. That doesn't mean patient has still, uh, you know, brain functions. You know, there's a spinal cord still can be viable. As you know, that spinal cord is supported, supplied by different blood flow so that below the neck, spinal cord can still will be viable. Sometimes you can, you know, anyway, I don't go through this, uh, this, this slide. Um, uh, this is what an observation. You know, any spinal reflex, sometimes patients will have sweating, tachycardia. Sometimes people have normal blood pressure without any support. Uh, sometimes patients may not have DA, diabetes insufficiency, as I explained, like uh, excessive urine output. They're saying the part of the pituitary has a blood supply from roof of the nose, so that some part of your uh, you know, pituitary can still secrete. The patient still can be diagnosed with brainstem death, but if the patient have a decelerate decortication because of your, uh, you know, uh, stimulation on the face, definitely cannot declare them brainstem death. Any patient have a seizures, for example, we cannot. Seizures mean patients' brains, you know, cells are still active. So you can see this, you uh, know, video. This is called Lazarus reflex, where you know this patient won't have any movement when you check on uh, you know uh, uh, orbital pressure suprapleural pressure but when you flex the neck you know because you are stitching the spinal cord the patient will move all four limbs you can see here So as I told, this is called Lazarus reflex. Sometimes what happens, we do, you know, certification twice by four doctors and sit the patient to OT. Suddenly anesthesia doctors call us, so he's moving, he's moving because when they apply the pill onto the head, suddenly he moves. So suddenly they, they, they panicky and uh, the call us saying that it's still moving. Then we go there and explain them to the videos. So the Lazarus reflex can be present in brainstem because your spinal cord is viable. And when you make, you can move. So you don't have to worry about that. Sometimes uh, even the relatives can ask these questions. Uh, you know, the patient is still moving, so it's still moving, you said it's brain dead. Then we have to see one more counseling and explain them and say that it is not, uh, you know, reflex because from the brain, it is from the spinal cord. So you have to counsel them and, uh, you know, move, move forward. The next one is a gap reflex. You just do the laryngoscopy, apply the cotton or, uh, you know, in the throat and see whether the patient's, uh, you know, pharyngeal muscles are active to rule out, you know, gag reflex and cough reflex, obviously, you put a catheter into the, uh, you know, trachea and see whether the patient's having cough reflex. As you, yes, we all know that the cough reflex lost reflex lost. Every patient won't move something. So, uh, you know, they still have a, when you touch the carina, they will have mild cough reflex. Maybe two, three days, that also goes off. Then the spontaneous breathing stops. So just uh, is caloric movement in uh, in eyes or open eyes and inject some 
warm and cold saline into the ear and see whether there is a nystagmus. If there is no nystagmus, obviously there is no uh, you know brainstem reflexes. Call cold and warm calorie test. Uh, you can go through the net. You can find out. And the last and final test kind of <coughs> apnea test. So apnea test is nothing bad. Uh, you have a brainstem. We have a respiratory center. This center is stimulated by two ways. One, when your oxygen level is drops. For example, you run. Your muscle needs more oxygen. Your oxygen level drops. Immunity stimulated. You know the center, so that immunity. That's what we breathe more. This is called hypoxic stimulation of the respiratory center. Obviously, we cannot do the test because when you induce hypoxia to stimulate the respiratory center brainstem bed patients, hypoxia itself can cause cardiac arrest and patient will die. So we cannot do that. The other test is hypercarbia test. Higher carbon dioxide also stimulates the test so that you can easily and safely do this test so that after building up the carbon dioxide, even after 20, for example, our carbon dioxide level by ABG, it's 40 millimeter of mercury. By building it up to 60, minimum it goes 60. You know, 20 should be as mandatory to elevate from the baseline. For example, somebody is a COPD, from 50 should elevate more than 70, you know. So that it's the raise should be 20 from the basic, and it should be more than 60, two criteria. For example, somebody's carbon dioxide level is only 25. 25 to 45, no, okay. It should be 40 to 60. The minimum after the testing, minimum should be 60. That to keep in mind. And the variation from pre-apnea, before apnea and after apnea should be 20. This is very clear about that. You do the testing, Every minute of apnea, we all read, increases your carbon dioxide level between two to three millimeter of mercury. That's why we recommend eight to 10 minutes. If 10 minutes of, if you keep somebody's in apnea, it increases by, you know, 20 millimeter of mercury. Even after that, if the patient is not breathing, that means you declare apnea test is positive for brainstem death. So is consent required for apnea test? No need for consent from the relatives to do the test. It is one of the normal examinations so that you can go ahead and do the apnea test without getting consent from the relatives. As I told pre-request before doing that again, the repeating, the same thing, core temperature should be normal. Patients should be having a eulemia and the normal carbon dioxide level, normal oxygen levels. Uh, we better to pre-oxygenate for you know, uh, at least 10 to 15 minutes with 100% oxygen before carrying the apnea, so that we all learned in our, uh, you know, technique, pre-oxygenation always helps us to prevent hypoxia. So this is one of the ways, so normally what we do, we remove the, uh, inter, uh, you know, we remove the breathing circuit, only keep the tube and pass, uh, you know, catheter, suction catheter, connected to oxygen, 5 liters of flow meter and keep into the trachea and stop the ventilator so that the oxygen goes inside the lung. It's called apneic oxygenation. Patient without breathing, the oxygen flows into the lungs even after sometimes even after 20 minutes without even ventilating, oxygenation happens beautifully and saturation continue to be 9900. This is beautifully, we, we can see the ethnic oxygen third patient's breathing. Uh, the other way of doing is this technique where you can connect the vein circuit and we can do this. You can see this girl, she's stopping the, you know, you see increasing oxygen to 100% on this, you know, ventilator. And you can see 100%, so that pre oxygenating with the 5P. You can see the carbon dioxide is more than 200 millimeter of mercury. And you can see the other side, it's even focus on this monitor where hemodynamically very stable. Uh, oxygen is 98, it goes to 100 soon. Blood pressure is stable. 
So this patient have invasive monitoring. Uh, no need always invasive monitoring. If your center doesn't have invasive monitoring, forget about it. You can go an IVP every during the test at least every two three minutes. You can do that. So they use a pain circuit here with two ABT syringes. And after 100, you know, 10 minutes of 100% ventilation, she's going to take ABG now. If you don't have arterial line, you can prick either radial or femoral and take a sample and send for uh, pre apnea ABG. So ABG has come, now we can see the carbon dioxide 39 in this. This should be normal range between 35 to 45. So sometimes this uh, Bain circuit technique uh, more useful when there is a lung contusion or early uh, you know, pneumonia uh, with hypoxia, who are required higher oxygen, the veins. Uh, this kind of uh, technique definitely more helpful because we keep some 5p uh, you can adjust the peep so you know oxygenation will be better so you kept the valve open with the six liters of flow there sometimes what happens we have to keep carefully watch here we cannot give more flow oxygen through this if we have 8 to 10 15 liters oxygen flow it will wash out the carbon dioxide so that it won't build up that much easily so that we'll be a little careful about um, you know how much flow should be given through this watch for eight minutes sometimes uh, i usually go up to 15 minutes you know apnea make sure double check whether you know the built up is more than 30 not 20. so that these people uh, most of the people are less than 60 years without much coma beds and uh, uh, you know sometimes even 15 minutes of apnea also they will be hemodynamically very stable and during the testing, make sure patient no hypoxia or hypotension. Sometimes the patient, if they are on vasopressors, because of carbon dioxide induced, vasodilatation happens and there may be hemodynamic instability can happen. In those situations, we can little uh, go upon your vasopressor like in our support. You can see it's drawing APT after eight minutes of apnea. There is no spontaneous breathing in our vein circuit bank. This is done in one of the Apollo hospitals. You can see this nicely done. Thank you for them. Can soon get the post apnea ABG. Before you have seen carbon dioxide 39, just we will see that this ABG now. She's still not having any breathing. Don't connect immediately to ventilator. We'll wait for ABG. Sometimes it's still not built up, it can go on for another five uh, minutes. This carbon dioxide built up depends upon your body temperature also. Sometimes if the temperature low, carbon dioxide won't build up. 
but patients who have low grade fever, the buildup will be much faster. So now they will show the ABG uh, reports. You can see the ABG here, left side 39, now 68.3. That means the patient is, you know, apnea positive, even the raise up to 65, 68, uh, patient still not breathing and declared brainstem death. So what, how you will certify, you know, brainstem death. So this is where, uh, you know, brainstem that uh, certification happens. See, after doing apnea, we fill this kind of form, which form says uh, identification of the patient, what is the history, how many days of ventilation, whether MLC, non-MLC, and what in, uh, you know, uh, uh, test done pre and post, and send to the SOTO, the Kaljeevana Sartagade, as a first intimation telling them we have potential patient in our hospital and declare brainstem death. And these are the investigation what we have done for this patient about the liver function, uh, heart functions, to x-rays or CT scan, and there is a subcommittee in the government to design whether each of the organs are fit enough to donate so that the activated recipient accordingly, the patient obviously should be zero negative. These are the investigation reports we sent to them. These are ABGs also, you know, you can see that first, first apnea and second apnea ABGs separately, you know, this is all a legal document. And this is the form 10 where we four doctors sign you know, that we identify, we did a uh, testing two different time and certified brainstem death. The four doctors should be here. One, the first should be your hospital administrator, uh, or, you know, should be doctor. It should not be non-doctor, it should be doctor, administrator. And second should be, second and third should be the doctors who are certif who are authorized by government. Uh, you know, you have a separate, uh, get authorization from the government of uh, state. Uh, to can identify uh, brainstem death, those doctors only can sign. And last is any doctor who is treating MBBS doctor, you know, a duty doctor in our, uh, you know, ICU can sign. Uh, the, the initial act says one neurologist, neurosurgeon must be there to certify, but uh, the subsequent 2014 amendments and rule says no need for neurologist, neurosurgeon if not available. If available, we can take, otherwise two doctors in terms of either anesthesiologist, or general medicine doctor or pulmonologists or general surgeons who have a knowledge about critical care that can sign uh, you know, this document to certify brainstem death. These are once done, we are right, uh, you know, more details about the patient, uh, complete documentation, certification, I said, you can do, uh, you know, two apnea, two, uh, you know, uh, tests to be done. One, first, and after that, six hours support, if there is adult patient, if the pediatric patient should be 12 hours apart, you have to do the testing, complete 12 uh, testings, then you have to document it and duly signed by, signed by all four doctors. This is what we get a concern from the relatives who are the closest relatives, uh, get a concern uh, from grandfather to grandson, grand, uh, grandmother to granddaughter, that all, you know, father, mother, wife, kid, Everyone can, uh, without considers a close relatives, can sign for uh, you know consenting for organ donation, and uh, we get some uh, other uh, couple of witnesses also uh, a signature for consent form. Then, if it is a police case, is an MLC case, what we do along with all the documents, we write to the police saying that this guy, this particular patient, came to our hospital with the following injury. Then, we, in spite of the treatment, he you know, he reached a stage of brainstem death. Now, group of four doctors certify them with brainstem death. Now, the family consented for organ donation. Please come, come and do the inquest. This is what the letter we write to the police. The cops will come and do the inquest. And, you know, the process happens to the sip the OT and for organ donation happens. So now the, the topic is how to maintain the brainstem death patients. When the patient's brainstem death happens, your head is gone, your brain is gone. So that every other organ independently try to maintain, but uh, you cannot. So that we have to help them to maintain individual organ functions. So that you know maybe first 24 hours is always crucial because when there is a coning happens, when there is a brain stem goes through the foramen magnum towards the spinal cord because of a lot of intracranial pressure. That is the time the patient can have a cardiac arrest because they have a lot of. 
uh, uh, you know, uh, break, uh, autonomic dysfunction happens, and uh, they, uh, you know, they, they suddenly what happen? You go and see the monitor hypertension and tachycardia. You know, heart rate goes 180, blood pressure 200. You try to treat it. What happen? Immediately the crash after 10, 15 minutes, the crash to the bradycardia and other. So that if the PP is very high in tachycardia, wait for some time, wait for some time, and slowly it settles. Then the next happens, the, you know, the patient goes for severe hypotension. Then we we'll start your noradrenaline, so first drug of choice. Then second drug of choice is your uh, uh, vasopressin to control your urine output. Sometimes some patients have myocardial dysfunction because we call it a stress-induced cardiomyopathy. So those EFs will be 15, 20 for the next two days. These patients may need low dose of adrenaline to maintain their blood pressure along with noradrenaline and vasopressin. So, so why our team? So we have, as I told, we have done now more than, you know, this within next last three years, we did more than 60 donations. We helped more than 250 organ retrieval. We did a cardiac, we, we have added a donations even after 10, 60 minutes of CPR. This is a very peculiar case, 17 year old boy, night 12 o'clock had a cardiac arrest. You know why? Because the nurse gave potassium little foster so the patient got a cardiac arrest. We did a 60 minutes of CPR continuous by team. After 60 minutes, we rewind and we prone the patient because of severe ARDS. And we, in fact, successfully harvested his heart and lung for organ you know, transplantation. We did sometimes severe, uh, you know, bad lung because of pulmonary edema. We prone patient for two days and we successfully harvested organ. We have initiated it more. There are a lot of articles has come up. You can see in the internet. We, if the patient was unstable, they were willing to donate organ. We initiated it more, stabilized the you know, organ for fusion for 24 hours. We went ahead for organ donation. So as observable period, when somebody comes to your ICU, you have any major neurosurgery, even after four hours, you can you know certify, you can go and certify them. Head injury, six hours. Uh, you know, any patients have cardiac arrest, we have to wait at least 24 hours. If you suspect, if somebody is having drug intoxication, we have to wait at least, you know, ideally speaking, four days, we have to wait before declaring them brainstem death. There is no age limit for organ donation, but generally, generally, kidneys more than 60 years, we won't take, liver more than 60 years, we won't take, kidney combined pancreas, uh, 45 years, pancreas alone, up to 50 years. Heart, we take up to 45 years. If there is no coma beds, sometime up to 50 years, we do coronary angiogram conventionally. If the coronary angiogram is normal, normal cardiac function will take. Lungs up to 65 years, we take, you know, uh, organs for heart, you know, transplantation. So when you find, you know, when they find some patients like this, last 45 minutes, you will listen about my talk, we have to transfer under critical care. So most of the government college critical care is maintained by your PGs and with our assistant professors or professors, <coughs> you transfer under you, you know, discontinue all the prayer orders. If the patient on manitol, stop the manitol. The patient on, uh, you know, all the kind of drugs, you stop all the drugs. And we need, just ask one nurse if possible, you know, dedicate one doctor for managing this patient for next 24 hours. Or you can have more attention towards this patient. Make sure this patient didn't have active infection like gangrene bubble because of injury or any other reasons. No encephalitis or meningitis, no active pneumonia or any other viral infections, no fungal infections, no parasitic infections, no malignancy, blood-borne malignancy, no melanoma. But any patients with primary only brain tumor without any secondary still can donate organs. So make sure this patient have arterial line if possible in your setup. If not, an IVP at least every five minutes. If you have an invasive CVP line, well and good for giving your vasopressors and sampling, frequent sampling. If not, at least put EJV external jugular vein with 16 gauge cannula. You know, you can maintain through that uh, your osseopressors. Make sure urine catheter done with every hour, uh, uh, hourly urine output monitoring. 
If possible, nasopharyngeal temperature probe monitoring continues. Actually, warm the patient with a blanket and wherever if you have. If not possible, NIPP, as I told, you know, every five minutes. Very simple basic monitoring. What we do normally in an anesthesia table, how to regular CVP possible, you don't know, temperature, maintain MAP, mean after pressure more than 65, or according to the age group with the pediatric patients, and urine output, maintain one to two ml per kg per hour. For somebody 50 kg, just maintain at least 50 ml to 100 uh, ml per hour. Do all the basic tests to make sure this organ is usable, you know, uh, renal function, kidney functions. Uh, blood grouping is very important for cross matching uh, to write to recipients and you do HPSAT, HIV. But now, even HIV patients can donate organ to HIV positive recipient. HPSAT positive patient can donate to HPSAT positive recipient. There are some of the studies happening because with very good antiviral drugs, even HPSAT positive patient can donate to. HPCG positive negative recipients with the antiviral drugs. And send all cultures, make sure because we send all cultures, uh, any you know growth from this, it will help us to you know give appropriate antibiotic in recipients. So pulmonary vein, how to manage you know lungs? Fantastic. You do AVG and repeat every eight hours, make sure your oxygenation better, your carbon dioxide level better. You will do x-ray and sometimes a lung king asks for CT chest to find out any you know, missed lesions and uh, to measure the height and the width of the chest so that appropriately fitting uh, you know, right recipients because height and weight is very important for lung matching. Enso peep is 5 plus to prevent any atelectasis. Adequate normal type or normal ventilation is important. In case a lot of secretions, you can ask your pulmonologist or the anesthesiologist themselves can do bronchoscopy and clean it up. You know, sometimes blood clots or secretion thick mucus to prevent further worsening of lung functions. Correct ventilator setting, the soda bicarb infusion in case there is metabolic acidosis initially. Good, nice fluids. And in case if the patient kidney is gone, so don't wait. You will do early dialysis. So obviously, you may not use the kidneys, but other organs be saved. So, just percussion, endotracheal suctioning, turn the patient every four hours. In case adequate nebulization for your bronchodilus to quiet, please give it. When we say lung is fit, X ray and CT should be normal, and your PF ratio should be more than 400. The gram stand should be no bacteria or culture negative. Sometimes, even there is culture growth with the normal PF ratio, we nowadays we are taking these organs. Airway pressure should be normal. There should not be abnormal high airway pressure. And bronchoscopy is clean and the T is clean, then only the lung is fit. When heart is fit, obtain echo. Echo is normal. Electrical imbalance. These patients should very notoriously go for very high sodium. One syllabus. Sometimes the sodium level will be 180, you know, because of DA. Diabetes in has lost a lot of water before coming to your setup. So that actively hydrate them with the 5% source. If the tolerating free water, NG2 free water is the ultimate uh, fluid to be given. And if not tolerating feeds very well, you can go 5% exhaust with a uh, uh, little insulin in that five units of insulin. Unfortunately, the glucose insulin bring down the potassium so fast, the severe hypokalemia happen. The sometimes the need 20 milliequivalents every hour, every hour for sometimes 80 milliequivalents, 100 milliequivalents, they record within four hours or eight hours because of the potassium. Will be 1.2, 1.3. So correct your fluid balance. Sometimes if the people who stick in the heart, the cardiac team always want to monitor CVP. They insist, so we have to monitor CVP. So the problem is here, the heart team wants to give more fluids so that optimum the cardiac functions, but the lung team says don't give more fluids because the lung may wet, they can be useful. So that we have to, you know, discuss both the teams being a critical care physician or in terms of the middle path, we have to utilize more, both. We are convinced them both because heart team says minimal loss of pressure. They won't take the high NARAC support, you know, so that we have to, you know, balance between these two teams. When heart is fit, normal echo, very, very minimal loss of pressure support. For example, if a NARAC, Four ampule NARAD, four ampule and 50 ml should be less than two ml you have to give. Then only they'll take the uh, heart. Sometimes 
if the echo showed hot functions only 45, you can start a low dose of uh, adrenaline, 4 ampullin 50, give 1 or 2 ml so that we can drastically come down your knowledge support. When you say kidney split, normal kidney function, urine protein creatinine ratio is normal, ultrasound kidney is normal, normal urine output. You know, that should be maintained. Sometimes the patient is a diabetic for a little longer time, hypertension, borderline create like 1.5, 1.6. Sometimes the patient developed acute renal failure because of the injury, you know, recent insult. They need a biopsy to prove a normal glomerulus and tubules before proceeding kidney. When liver is fit, LFT should be normal. Sometimes LFT may be abnormal if the SGOT PT is, you know, maybe a touch up to 500, 1000. At least it should be downtrend. Downtrend, the SGOT PT should be less than at least 100. And ultrasound CT should be normal. Your ABG lactate should be less than 4. It's not exactly normal. Less than 4, uh, they will take the moderate vasopressor they accept. Sometimes a patient has alcoholic, you know, liver alcoholic uh, in a history with ultrasound show grade one to fatty liver. They always want a liver biopsy before proceeding because if the patient have less than 30% of the liver, you know, uh, uh, in a fatty liver, they still proceed. Nowadays, we have some of the organ perfusion machine. This borderline, uh, you know, liver will take into the machine we flush it for six hours and again be using them uh, for a transplant. Maintenance fluid, as I told always, fluid of choice is 5% exposed. Give 5% of plenty of fluids. And in case uh, after it become normal, your sodium level, you can change to a ringer lactate with the NG feed. And you do ABG, sodium, potassium, maybe eight hourly, and keep on modifying your replacement fluids and electrolytes and uh, you know maintain before sitting the operation theater make sure you give wonderful organ function OT. See that's what all the most of the transplant surgeon used to tell us the you know if you resuscitate a patient in the you know in our ICUs uh, you know uh, you know fantastically the output of the transplant success increase in leaps and bounds. That's what I say, you know, if you give minimal FIO requirement, minimal vasopressor requirement, good urine output, good, uh, you know, uh, overall functions, they're extremely happy. The success of transplant happens very well. And GRPS should be monitored between one to four hours. It depends upon this sugar level. There is a diabetes insipid, as I told, if somebody's urine output more than 6 ml per kg per hour, somebody, for example, 50 kg person, the urine output is more than 300 and uh, sodium level more than 20, 154, we have to start vasopressin for them. If you have a center have a desmopressin acid spray, we can give, or sometimes subcutaneous bolus dose of 5 to 10 units given, or you can give infusion of vasopressin, 40 units and 40 ml, Starts under 1 ml or you can go up to 2.4 ml per hour to control the urine output. So that's why I told this slide already. So what is the choice of vasopressors? Your noradrenaline is the first choice for it now become all critical care setup. And second choice is vasopressin. If you have any dysfunction, your EF is less than 45 something, low as vitamin A helps to improve the cardiac function so that you can come down on a NORAD support. This is the last and final slide. I'm going to end now. Rule of 100. What is the best uh, you know, monitoring system? Your systolic blood pressure more than 100. Urine output more than 100 ml per hour if it's a 50 kg general. PO2 more than 100. Hemoglobin constant is more than 100 grams per liter. That means 10 grams. If ideally, if there is somebody is or you know, uh, hemoglobin less than 7.6, you transfuse up to two points of BRBC and sugar should be around 100. With this, thank you so much. I will end my talk. I open for the questions now. Thank you.
thank you sir for yes sir great talk and nishant uh, orankar uh, are there any questions in the uh, chat box i hope uh, i i'm not i i encourage all to the post uh, there any queries they can i'm allowing everybody to unmute themselves so you can unmute yourself and uh, ask uh, interact with the doctor nazar ai sir and doctor uh, nirmal sir unmute yourself sir please yes hello doctor dorai i said doctor akyotri my question is that once you finalize the brain death then how you coordinate the harvesting of the organ pertaining to the transplant sir kindly unmute sir order i can't listen yeah can you hear me now yes yes sir yes yes sir so when when we do the first test or setup test including apnea itself will inform the government soto so to the government body tell them we have a potential patient in our hospital with all the details of the patient to them pending second test and consent from the relative so that we give some time to the government to activate the system so they will look for and you know appropriate recipients the organ allocation happens such a way who are the top waiting list in the you know the state so for example uh, uh, you know particular hospital if they inform them your hospital your patient is a first priority keep your recipient informed so there is all the recipient informed there is one potential patient in particular hospital be ready you to call in time why they will send their blood samples to the particular lab for example in uh, in uh, in bangalore ttk lab there all the recipient blood sent to the ttk lab from our hospital will send the blood to the ttk lab then the cross matching happened between the donor and the recipients and by the time we do the second apnea after six hours by the time we we'll know who's matching in case this patient is ready to donate the relative ready to donate organs so that those recipients are being selected selected what are the organs so fine what are the recipient done so after the second testing so we finish up all the formalities if it is mlc police formality takes another 8 to 10 hours and most of the time we retrieve the organs early morning hours because sometimes you want airlift the you know organs to other state or capital so that the retrieval team all comes early morning to 3 o'clock all goes to what year around 5 o'clock in the 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock in the morning then they start opening the chest all the team heart team lungs team liver team and kidney team come from the recipient hospital here you know they fly here come with a chopper in case need they come to the recipient hospital open up all the organs and see the organ for example lung team says i open the lung lung looks good we need to inform his recipient team recipient team opens up the chest and remove the line put the patient on bypass machine wait for this organ so that see what happened the the the, the from the retrieval to the transplant should be happened within 6 hours you know we cannot keep it for long time so it is so so meticulously done and the flight in the booked appropriate flight in the airport so we arrange a green corridor as per the supreme court rules we arrange a green corridor reach the organ and the police the clearance in the airport authority happens within 15 minutes organ will be arrived there and there also for example we send the organs from here to calcutta or chennai and in the same their airport also there will be green corridor arranged from there to the hospital and end to end complete arrangement done by various teams of the coordination and we successfully do the retrieval and transplantation sir sir kindly unmute sir unmute sir unmute sir my another question is that yes sir. once you get the duration of the time for harvesting in the morning hours 
Yes, sir. Is there any priority regarding the harvesting of the organ? Yes, the yes, sir. See, many many times what happens when the harvesting happens, always the teams have a different choices, depends on the fly. Because if you take a chopper, chopper charges six to eight lakhs. So unnecessary bill of the recipient goes up. So that we try to use a domestic flight possible, morning flight or evening flight possible. I agree so, to that. Yes, I, sir. I agree. My question is that because the eye can be wait for our six hours, seven hours. Yes, sir. It can yes, wait. Sir. But yes, liver sir. and lungs and heart, they cannot yes, wait for so much long. Yes, sir. That's when you open the chest up to the chest and abdomen, the first organ to come out is the heart. Okay. Second organ is lungs. Third, liver. Fourth, kidneys. Then only eyes and skin and their bones happen, sir. These are the that's sequence. That's what I wanted to. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Very for nice the... information. Yes, sir. From your side, sir. Yes. Thank you, Great. sir, for the query and thank you, Chinadurai, sir, for responding so well to the query. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, I do have one query. Yes, uh, apnea tests are not always confirmatory. Yes. Sir. So, in your institute, what ancillary test do you perform for confirming the diagnosis, sir? Yes. What sir. is the protocol in your institute, sir? Yes. No, sir. It is. It is the law. Also says the same thing. No, no institution should differentiate. If apnea test cannot be done, for example, the patient has a very long, bad contusion, they have already a FAO requirement more than 50, 60, we cannot do apnea test. These patients should be wheeled into for CT cerebral angiogram and confirm there is no blood flow before proceeding. Your EEG, it's not valid. Transcranial Doppler, it's not valid. MR angiogram is very difficult to do on these patients because they are already on so many monitors you cannot take. CT cerebral angiogram must in case you are not able to do apnea test. Only once done is enough, no need to do twice. Only one test, it supports both sides of the test actually. We can skip apnea test. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Can't TCD be a confirmatory uh, test uh, if... No, sir. No, sir. There are ancillary tests. EEG tests sometimes what happen, the same that though the brain stem did happen, some part of the base of the brain where you have a supply from your, uh, you know, uh, from the heart palate, some supply happens. Some, even few cells are alive, it gives you know, unequal results. So no, never always a flat line. So that, uh, that's what we are avoiding EEG, sir. Sir, about transcranial Doppler, sir. Transcranial Doppler, again, is operator dependent. You know, some people, they need a lot of training for that to, to conform so that <coughs> they won't accept, sir. They won't accept. Just for the, the because we yeah. used to do transcranial Doppler at Ames daily, sir. Yes, sir. because yes. whenever we had any uh, suspicion or uh, not yes. able to confirm the diagnosis, yes, because uh, I, I'm a neuroanesthetist, we used to do transcranial Doppler yes. to get yes. it confirmed. Because you are well versed now, that cannot be you know percolated for every place, that is a problem, correct, sir. Absolutely correct, sir. Sir, how do you manage the green corridor? We know the traffic congestion of Bangalore, yes. especially from the city to the uh, airport, we know yes. about the traffic congestion. So, how yes, do you uh, protocolize it or how do you manage it, sir? Please. No, sir, actually, see what happened. Um, uh, as per the Supreme Court rule, uh, green corridors should be given. You will inform the police. The police, the pilot vehicle come in advance. They freeze all the signal section. They freeze all the signals. Most of the time, whatever our donation happens, most of the green corridor happens between morning 7 to 8 o'clock before the traffic starts. But even we do the peak hour, still the police is so, so cooperative with us that do the green color for us. Okay, sir. Can you start so the uh, uh, helicopter services or from hospital to the airport? Yes, sir, we can do so. That is the future, sir. That's going to be future. Yeah, so uh, at this moment, we are not doing because the chopper cost itself so high, you know, people cannot be able to afford. But we, we do chopper service from small cities. So recently we had one Chikmagaluru. Uh, about the hospital time, because I know it is 35 kilometers from the airport. <laughs> yes, sir. City is 35 we can, kilometers. We, we, we can and do, it will take about uh, 20, 30 minutes minimum. It yes, will sir. make the green corridor also. Yes, sir. I yes, think the chopper yes, or other method must be much more useful than this. Yes, it's possible, sir. It's possible. It can be usable, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, I do have one more query. Yes. Uh, literature says that once the patient is brain dead, uh, it is uh, assumed that there is adrenal insufficiency. 
so we need to give methylprednisolone vasopressin thy- thy- even thyroxine so yes. do you reti- routinely give uh, all these drugs uh, to brain dead patients or you go for serum levels of such no sir we we routinely give you see what happens we don't have any iv thyroxy so that by default we put them 300 microgram once a day you know two three days we continue them uh, see what happens steroid again um, we mainly give steroids uh, hemodynamic instability patients otherwise give steroids only for recipient shape before shifting to ot till 12 hours before shifting to ot we routinely give one Uh, gram of methyl prednisolone over one hour we used to give. There are so many articles that come up with the different uh, you know protocols of methyl pred infusion. Unfortunately, what happened? Sometimes uh, though we declared uh, brainstem death, sometimes the relatives may not willing to donate even for five days, seven days, ten days also. We have donated even after seven days actually brainstem death. If you see them, they will be very unstable only first to two days. After that, they will be rock. stable if there is no secondary infection from third day onwards sometimes there no need for vasopressor requirement sometimes we donate up a seventh day so that we use the steroid so meticulously sometimes they will unstable we give 500 methyl prednisolone initially another 500 keep before you know we give before shifting to ot for retrieval sir thank you so much sir uh, to all the delegates who are attending Uh, i would just like to mention that diabetes insipidus is a very very common problem that occurs in brain dead patients and it's actually very challenging to ma- manage diabetes insipidus because of the fluid uh, choices and the ongoing uh, hypovolemia so sir how do you manage diabetes insipidus in such cases and what is is the choice of fluids in such patients yes sir see that Uh, not uh, that's what uh, uh, not every patient develop DI because that's what they say that some people have posterior pituitary blood supply through you know some other base of the skull so that 40 to 50 percent of people only develop DI some people develop DI for few hours and stop some people develop very bad DI we have seen see if there is a DI we have to aggressively until your vasopressin works IV vasopressin or desmopressin nasal spray sometimes what happen they have injury in the naso naso you know nozzle and we can give sublingual also give a desmopressin spray uh, most of the time what we use uh, iv vasopressin uh, infusion it keeps the both way improve the blood pressure and control your uh, uh, urine output uh, sometimes what happen 4 to 5 hours sometimes end up giving one liter of fluid one liter loss one liter give one liter loss one liter of iv fluids Uh, and uh, when we give, uh, especially those not tolerating NG feed very well, you know, we cannot give free water. We hundred percent rely on only five percent extrus in them. When we give five percent extrus, sometimes five hundred ml to thousand ml per hour to replace your urine output, your your uh, sugar score is very high. When sugar score very high, we chase the insulin. When we chase the insulin, severe hypokalemia happens. You know, so it's always. Uh, You know, within few hours they become unstable. They die also. So this few hours of meticulous management of DI, you know, after maybe four hours, five hours, then slowly once vasopressin acts and okay, some some sort of relief happens to us now. So these four five hours we need me- two two times we need meticulous monitoring and treatment is one when the coning happens because autonomic dysfunction happens suddenly hypertension, tachycardia. Then followed by hypotension and uh, severe, you know, bradycardia arrest. That time, you know, maybe one or two hours we need close attention. And second close attention needed only when severe DA happens in few patients. Apart from that, everybody can manage easily these patients. Sir. Thank you so much, sir. Question, very, sir. very well taken. <laughs> yes, sir. Please. And, yeah. Thank you, Dr. I. May I yes, ask sir. one thing? Yes, sir. When you start. the process of organ donation to the relatives and the well the relatives and friends are relatives but several as attendants yes sir how you start the proceedings of the organ donation to inform them that yes. patient condition is this yes because sir, you sir. have to prepare mentally you have not yes. taken the consent for it yes there sir. is no such consent yes sir yes sir and yes. for a stage yes. comes when you have to promote the attendance for the organ donation yes sir what is yes. that stage or how you coordinate that phenomena yes sir uh, 
um, so it is kind of uh, counseling so important we are all anesthetists um, and we are more empathetic towards uh, somebody's uh, the pain so in critical care what happen we will keep telling them patient's condition then before even declaration we tell them we suspect the patient is brain stem death so because brain functions is not moving you can take them inside and show them see i uh, stop the ventilator he is not breathing but heart activity is still there and there is no cough reflex we going to do the some test and confirm whether brain is still functioning so we prepare the mind the patient may have, don't have a brain function first so then by the time we finish the test and comes and tells them see we have done the test uh, four doctors together so look like there is no brain functions so we 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 are confirming that patient is brain dead so once you tell them they will they will cry uh or oh, losing them uh, what is brain death sometimes we have to explain more and more what is brain death what is not brain death complete death we we'll keep explain to them then the last you know we have to we should not talk about organ donation to spot so leave them to sink in the sorrow then they will come back and ask what is next what is next when they come forward what is next you know that mean they understood brain stem death they coming to the end of the you know end of the road they will ask us question what to know then we can tell them there is two possibility very clearly you can tell them only two possibility possibility one he is declared dead you know brain dead equal to complete death as per the law if you don't want to continue you let him to deteriorate slowly slowly next 12 to 24 hours as per the law we cannot disconnect at this moment so you can slowly dis, you know deteriorate we when you have a cardiac arrest you want to revive it we give it to you we can take him home if it is non emergency if it is emergency you have to have out to police so do the post mortem there is other way of doing is organ donation you can save many people you can give life to you know 8 to 10 people you can still survive in this world lot of memory transfer happens you know so that you can do the noble cause this is two way to go ahead we won't pressurize don't ask anything it is from your heart what says please do it that's what we tell them and leave it there leave it there and they go out and think and think and discuss and come back and ask us you know if we want to do organ donation okay what is the process yes that will take for that sir we will come now we never will show our desperation towards our intention the intention of the squeezing the things yes sir. Yes, sir. Because my why I ask this question reason yes. behind in the private hospitals once you talk about all these things the attendant gets panicky. Yes. They feel that you are going to sell the organ of the body. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why repeated and repeated counselling should happen. We never <coughs> until patient sitter to OT also should not show desperation. you know yes. so that's what we educating through the media and the social media and tv media selling so all these people save many lives this people many many life every 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 patient will comes and ask can you support family financially can you support patient financially we can tell them sorry as per the law we cannot do that it is illegal and please father it is a donation it is not selling it is donation You can, you can keep telling marketing is like that sir yes, that's sir. why i am asking this question yes absolutely the same question sir they will ask on the same sir yes sir <laughs> because the sometimes the attendants they become crazy they want some money of donation yes, relatives yes, and others yes sir yes sir the racket is going on so yes, i have to sorry to ask yes, this question Absol- but absolutely sir absolutely thank you very much you. for nice yes. illustration and uh, Wonderful explanation to me only at least. Yes, God bless. Yes, yes. Thank you so much, sir, for such a important and valid question, and thank you, sir, for addressing to that query. Uh, if any other delegate is having any other query, uh, kindly unmute and please uh, ask your query to to speaker, sir. And uh, yeah. we had a wonderful discussion yes sir uh, uh, thank you dr jinder sir for this uh, i know you have been speaking from the work you have been doing over the years and years together and i'm very sure with the recording of all of this lecture on isa website in the isa academics tab and on isa youtube channel isa nhq 
Sure, it will be definitely be helpful for the post graduates who will see it in their uh, time also again and again. And really thankful to you for sharing your valuable wisdom. And please keep on motivating the residents and the faculty alike to promote organ donation. I just like the best world. Your whole lecture was excellent, practical, but the one which was steadily touching was you are not selling, you are donating. Yes, sir. sir. Thank you, and greetings from IIT National Headquarters. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We are holiday on account of Diwali, yes. and we will be meeting on thirty-first October. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.